And that was Paul's message of the grace of God. Verse 46, then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you reject it, this next phrase needs underlined in your Bible. This is amazing. Since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. What does Paul say the Jews' problem is? It's not that they're not zealous. It's not that they're not trying. It's not that they don't believe Moses. It's that they don't consider themselves worthy of the grace of God. Why don't they consider themselves worthy? Because they've yet to exhaust themselves on Moses. Here's what I found in me. Until I exhausted myself on cocky Paul, religious Paul, effort-filled Paul. I'm, I'm describing to you the Paul that went into the ministry. Cocky, full of effort. I'm going to outread you. I'm going to outstudy you. I'm going to outpreach you. I'm going to outargue you. I studied my Bible to win fights. I'm just being honest with you. I studied my Bible to win arguments. Because if you wanted to argue doctrine, you'd come to the right guy. So I'd go home and I would put my nose in it to try to be able to come back with a bunch of verses and get into it with you. Because I was convinced that there's only two of us going to win this fight. There's only, I mean, there's only two of us in this fight. Whoever's me, me versus you, there's only one of us going to win. Oh, that's sick. I don't like that guy. I don't even like to think back on him. I don't like to look at him. Um, He's, he's, he's part of my heritage, though, and, and it's a big, big reason why I'm off the one hand and I'm on the other hand, okay? But until I got worn out with that Paul, I, I wasn't ready to, to deem myself ready for God's grace, all right? And I think what's happening is that we're not yet worn out on our own efforts. Someone in one of my recent stops said to me, Pastor Paul, why don't they get it? They said, I got family, and I, they've seen me transformed by grace, and they fight me in this message of grace. Why don't they get it? And I said, because they're not yet exhausted on their own performance. They still got a little kick left in them. They still got a little gas in the tank. They still got a little spark. But the day is going to come when they're going to wear out. You know where it comes for a lot of people? When they have a big blowout sin. And they run to grace because they realize the big blowout sin just taught them none of that junk was working. It doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to have a big blowout sin. We could just get worn out. Just get tired of trying on our own and realize that we didn't have to. That's the revelation we want people to have. But the Jews in Paul's day in Acts 13 had not yet, they, did, they judged themselves unworthy of the everlasting life. And so Paul said, so we turn to the Gentiles. Well, what about the righteous requirements? What about the stuff God wants me to do? Pastor, didn't God create me for good works? Absolutely, he did create you for good works, but good works out of relationship, not good works out of servanthood. He created you for good works to spring forth from someone who has their, their root tapped into the, who he is, grafted into the vine of who he is. Jesus said, my father's the husbandman. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Fruit doesn't grow on the vine. Fruit grows on the branches. You get fruit out of your branch, but guess who you're connected to? The vine. I'll close with this, Romans chapter 8. I know everybody in the message of grace knows Romans chapter 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, but I want to remind you of a verse that sometimes we miss the front half of this on our way to other things. Just look at the front half of Romans chapter 8, verse 4. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Did you know that when you walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh, the righteous requirements, righteous requirements of the law have been met in you. Whatever God requires through righteousness has been met in you. So I'm going to take care of one last rebuttal because I know exactly where that rebuttal is going to come from. Yeah, pastor, but what happens when I'm in the flesh? See, you, you just said, Romans 8, 4, the righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled in us who don't walk according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. So what happens, Pastor Paul, when I walk according to the flesh? Look at verse 9. I'm going to just let you read it for a second. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit if God's Spirit 
dwells in you. Let me ask you this. How many of you, the Holy Spirit lives in your temple? Amen. Guess what? According to Romans chapter 8, verse 9, you're never in the flesh. I, I, I want to let that soak in again because, see, your definition of in the flesh, that doesn't even match up with what Romans 8 says because we go, in the flesh means I went out and did something stupid. No, 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 no. In the flesh is those who are functioning in this world without having the residence of the Holy Spirit living inside of them. How many of you have the residency of the Holy Spirit living inside of you? How many of you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We love to say that when we want to tell people to stop smoking. <laughs> or we want to tell people how to eat or how to drink or what they ought to weigh. We love to fire out that my body's the temple. But the moment it comes down to are you in the flesh or in the spirit, we're not the temple anymore. Let's be consistent. Yes, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what we look like or are shaped like or what we're putting in, we are still his temple. Now you let the spirit deal with you on what the externals of that temple look like and how they function, but don't ever... Consider that you've stopped being the temple because you think you went into the flesh. According to the Apostle Paul, you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit if the Spirit lives in you. Now, how many of you the Spirit lives in you? Yeah. Then let's quit dealing with this hand. Amen. Quit going back over here to where you can put that warm blanket of performance on and figure out three things you think you need to do in order to please God. Leave the other hand alone because you have that which allows you to draw near to God. You have that which Paul called the grace of God. What a beautiful thing.